Welcome. My name is Daniel Diaz. My name is Kaeli Reyes. And I am Abel Garcia. And we are going to present our project. We hope that you enjoy it. So, let's start. We all know traditional bicycles. Yes, those with chain drives. I am sure we have all used them at some time. But what if I told you that there are bicycles without chains? How will you react? I am sure we all know how bicycles work. When you turn the pedals, the chain turns. Therefore, a movement is created. But if the bicycle does not have a chain, then how does it move? This one here is a chainless bike. As you can see, it is quite similar to a normal bike of lifetime. But the big difference is here. As you can see, this does not have a normal bicycle. This is the mechanism that makes a bicycle without chain work. Basically, the chain is emplaced by a series of gears and bearings that will be what will make the bike advance. This is the way it works. Here we see a kind of teeth on the rear wheel. This is what will allow the chain of speeds in this type of bicycle. The same tooth pattern can be found on the pedals. What is happening is that the teeth of the pedal move the brain of the tooth. This is to rotate the entire tooth and at the other end there are other bearings to make the wheel rotate. These last bearings move forward and backward, and in this way the speed of the bike change. It is very likely that you have never seen one of these bikes. This is because they are not very well known, since standard bikes are much more popular and traditional. On the other hand, chainless bicycles are hardly trying to be implemented on the market. Despite this, there are already several different models of chainless bicycles. Although the one we have just seen is the most popular, there are those that use type of pulley, also the ones with the pedal directly on the rear rim, even this one that mix a treadmill and a bike. This one can help a little to take more speed due to the shape it has, and even this looks interesting. Uh, well. <laughs> We have to admit that there are also some that don't have the best design. But well, despite all these models, today we will focus on one in specific. This mechanism that we see here is known as cardan shaft. It is better known for being used on motorcycles, although it can also be used on bicycles. However, it has its pros and cons, like everything. And this is where this video comes in. Here we will explain certain things about the cardan shaft and we will say why it is not so used in bicycles as well as some of our ideas to create a better bicycle well a bicycle with axle transmission or also called with current transmission or bicycle without chain is characterized by using a transmission axis instead of a chain to carry the power of the pedals to the rear wheel consists of a series of gears on different shafts strategically placed to transmit the movement of the pedal to the wheel. It is a valuable option because the maintenance of this type of bicycle is minimal, so it is a less expense to your wallet, it is less likely to break and it makes less noise, and actually is a much safer system for the driver. Indeed, the first drive axle for bicycles seems to have been independently invented in 1890 in the United States. And you would probably wonder if they were created more than a century ago, why haven't seen them on the street or uh, in a store? Well, this is because the cardan has only one speed. The power required to move it was too much and, unlike the current bicycles, it is much more expensive. In addition, if it breaks, it's much more complicated and almost impossible to repair. At the beginning of the semester, the main idea of the project was the implementation of a different transmission system than the commonly used. 
The real purpose of this system was merely aesthetic and without any addition to the use of the bicycle. This idea was conceived thanks to a prototype that is still in development to this day. The name of this prototype is Driven and is a creation of a British company, Ceramic Speed. This idea was presented of the world in 2018, using a system of bearings and quite peculiar stars that allowed its operation. Well, with this idea, we start working the production of a new system. The first prototypes made for the transmission change were quickly scrapped. The reason of that were its complexity of construction and the high cost. However, the first design that was carried out was the child bike. This prototype was changed due to some recommendations received from experts who were helping in the development of the project, giving an aesthetic and a functional change to the prototype. Thanks to this, Chainless Bike emerged. With the new prototype, an aesthetic improvement was sought. The addition of a speed disc and about all, a total adaptability to any type of commercial bicycle are showing a quite promising model that meets some of the requirements that we were looking for. Now, for the creation of the mechanism, different pieces were designed, such as the chain ring. That is an helical gear located on the pedals and it has 72 teeth. Then, next to the chain ring, there is another small helical gear which serves to change the axis of movement and it has 21 teeth. Fixed to the smaller helical gear, there is another one which changes the axis of rotation and it comes with 12 teeth. The movement passes through a warm screw to two pieces equal to the two mentioned above. And then on the back, replacing the gear star, there is an helical gear with different sizes, simulating the different speeds, each one with 72, 60 and 14 teeth, respectively. Subsequent analysis, let us note that we were talking the wrong way for the current realization of this innovation. From this point, we stuck with an exhaustive analysis of the system involved, finding data to be considered in the future, based on the difference between the use of a chain system, one per band, and finally one per gimbal, being the last one the most stricken due to different factors that made it stand out from the rest. The durability, a little maintenance, and reduction of risk factors show it as the best mechanisms to be modified. Taking into account the advantages that each system presents, the research, design and proposal were started to carry out the implementation of the new system that offers the great number of advantages of each system. Taking the advantage of the chain, which is economic, efficient and globally used, taking the same system which is the band, which is economic and safe. And taking the advantage of the current, that is minimum maintenance, less noise and lower probability of rupture. These are the approximate cost of each system. As you can see, the current is the most expensive with a difference of 12,000 pesos. This because the complexity of machining the current. But as we mentioned before, the most representative advantage of the current system is that the time between the maintenance is much longer making that the probability to suffer malfunctions do this use fall in a great way. The difference between maintenance of one system and another is 24,000 km. This because it's advisable to graze a chain every 1,000 km, while a cardan can continue working without the necessity to change its soil by 25,000 km. Another feature to take into account in terms of these mechanisms is safety. When a cardan or band breaks, the acceleration to of the pedaling of the bike is lost and these two mechanisms all fall and stop working, without any extra complications. On the other hand, sometimes the chain of the bicycle tends to hump, completely blocking the rotation of the wheels and causing a total loss of control of our bike, being quite risky for the cyclist. However, these risks and the need for constant maintenance are completely reduced due to the efficiency that the chain system presents, and that is 97%. This is why the new system that is sought to be created must meet four main characteristics. Safety. This must be identified when looking for possible failures that the system may present, looking to avoid at all costs that the sudden malfunction of the system can cause an accident. 
My intentness. In this aspect, the reliability that the system can give us is of great importance, allowing us continuous use without the necessity for the constant reviews of the system. Efficiency. This refers to the energy consumption necessary to move the mechanisms. This because it is planned to be used by human force, so it shouldn't be so very hard to move, and the speed obtained must be good enough to combine the buyer. Economy. In this aspect, we take into account that the major aspects will strongly inflate the cost that the system will have. This because improving all systems and that at the same time its costs don't pass a lot of the cost of the chain will entail a great deal of research. However, the ones calculated until today are 2000 and 3000 pesos, considering the previous prototypes that we made and the cost in the raw material and machining that they present. To produce the parts, we will use the CNC machine and the turnstile to cut the metal and give it the form that allows the core function of the mechanisms. In this way, the first part of the mechanisms is going to be created by the CNC machine given the main form of each part. After it, the turnstile is going to make the final details of the helical gears and the plate. We decided to work with helical gears because they allow your operation to run smoother and quieter compared to sport gears or sprockets. Also, the helical gears are more durable and are ideal for high load operations as they have more teeth in contact. Load at any time is distributed in several axes which generates less wear. And they can transmit motion and power either between parallel axes or right angle axes. This is a resistant material, rigid and it has certain flexibility that makes it more comfortable and absorbs vibration on the road. It's not the lightest material, although they are currently lighter but more expensive alloys. Most of the time it can be fixed if it breaks and it does not usually lose properties over time. It is a light material compared to steel usually a little bit expensive and it weighs 50% less than steel. In addition, aluminum has other alloys. This in order to make it more resistant since when it breaks it's almost impossible to repair it. The aluminum is a material easy to work with and it has a useful life cycle more or less long depending on the intensity with which the bicycle is used. Since it's not a corrosive material, the paint becomes a decorative element. It's a fashionable material and it weighs 60% less than steel. It has 35% stiffness and support to breakage and fatigue. It has a very shock absorber and starting from the mold or joining the tubes in two or three ways. It can have strange shapes. It is an extremely moldable material. It is almost 5 to 10 times more expensive than steel, and carbon can be broken if a force is applied at a specified point. It is an extremely rigid and lightest material. It can almost last a whole life as it is stainless and extremely resistant to corrosion. This material is affected by some acids and the cost of this is very high. Among all our options, we decided that the most viable was the steel due to its characteristic already mentioned. It is important to mention that this project is not 100% developed. It is something that is constantly being modified and improved. Day by day is still being investigated and modified in order to achieve the objective proposed at the beginning of this video. So it is most likely that it will take some time to find the possible final version, to be able to manufacture the first copies and, in case of detecting faults, modify it again. We are talking about 5 or 6 years of work and improvements to offer a reliable and quality product. This project will be of help to future researchers interested in the topic. This investigation will be uploaded to research sites, so in that way whoever that has the necessary resources can continue it and not present the same problems as us.